At the last meeting, there was a question about time portals. Could you tell us what they are? Are they natural doorways in our reality? Can they be opened by mages? How do they work? Do they only allow us to travel in one direction, or can we move backward and forward in time like in science fiction TV shows? If a person disappears at one point in time and reappears at another, what risks are involved? Can the grandfather paradox occur if he goes back in time? How can we find time portals, and where can we get more information about them? The internet offers only a few similar legends without any specifics. You know, the internet won't provide any specifics because that kind of information isn't core. It's not the fundamental basis on which everyone's worldview and outlook are built. This kind of information does not belong to the proto-foundation good, but rather to the proto-foundation's freedom, chaos, and evil which means that it is not available to everyone. The answer to each of your questions is yes. These portals can be opened by mages or appear spontaneously. The grandfather paradox can occur, and it is indeed possible to travel from one point in time to another you can disappear from one space and reappear in another. And in the new space where you appear, everything will feel natural, as if you had always belonged there, while in your old space it will feel as if you had died. So, when you go back to your old space, you might run into someone you know, and he may say something like, I thought I heard about your funeral, the book Monday begins on Saturday illustrates an example of such a premature death. The situation of the director of the institute, who had two personalities, A. Janus and S. Janus, is a phenomenon of the same kind, although it is described within a slightly different paradigm. In our world, everything is possible. Our reality is highly diverse, with its own density and structural features. Occasionally, mathematical errors can cause reality to collapse. Although there are protective mechanisms to prevent such collapses, errors can still occur, leading to various phenomena. For example, someone can disappear from one place and reappear in another, or disappear from our reality and reappear in another. Someone can return with documents from a country that never existed, or vice versa, someone from another reality can appear in our reality, situations like these are described in our reality as well as in others. The current mathematical model of reality is simply better protected against these kinds of errors. However, when the model was different, less protected, or programmed differently, such situations occurred more frequently and were often described in fairy tales and myths. They tell stories from the past. For example, when a person disappeared from this world and appeared in another world and lived there for a while. And when he returned to this world he found that 300 years had passed. So as soon as he set foot on the ground he turned to ashes. Biology activated the algorithm of death, which restored all the natural processes. Because that person should have died a long time ago, 300 years ago during the period when he disappeared from this world and lived in another, we can perceive such stories as fables. But we can also perceive them as mathematical descriptions of these phenomena. We can perceive them as a list of bugs that can happen in this reality. And these bugs in the program of reality eventually became fairy tales describing how people swapped places with other people from another parallel reality, sometimes consciously and sometimes unconsciously.
And that's not fiction or fantasy. No, that's just another bug from the list. It's just that human fantasy and imagination have turned them into the sort of stories people tell around the fire on long winter evenings when there's nothing to do and a blizzard is raging outside. In the old days, when it was believed that the gods themselves could come in human form and tell people these stories, and sometimes it happened in a different way. You see, there are two binary ways of thinking, the mythological and the pragmatic. Our task is to learn how to combine them, rather than limiting our consciousness by using only one way of thinking and denying the other. So far we need to use another intermediate form of description that allows us to combine these two paradigms, both mythological and pragmatic thinking. We need to find a third component, a program. And we will use this program to describe how we can combine pragmatic and mythological ways of thinking. But we should not forget for a moment that this is just an assumption, a philosophical modeling, an attempt to describe the unspeakable by means of the principle of philosophical paradox, we should not forget for a moment that in this case we are simply making concessions, because we have no other way to describe the combination of mythological and pragmatic thinking. And a program, the very principle of a program, is the best way to describe such a combination. We can describe almost anything using the terminology of programs and their algorithms. However, since we are born as mythological spiritual beings and educated as logical rational beings, we must not forget for a moment that we are only making a compromise. So we need to make a logical assumption to stop fighting against ourselves and denying our Dionysian or Apollonian nature or any other manifestation in ourselves or in the world around us. We need to make such an assumption. We need to use Henry Kissinger's method of shuttle diplomacy. We have to find a third common element that connects two previously unconnected elements, bearing in mind that this connection can only be achieved through the common element. That is what we have to do. And once we have found that third common element, we remove it and allow the two elements to connect in such a logical and natural way that nothing has to be destroyed or denied. We don't have to kill our opponent to prove our right to exist. So, colleague Anna, everything is possible, everything is acceptable, everything can happen and everything can be explained. Don't look for a single explanation. You will only put yourself in the framework of binary thinking, because as soon as our consciousness finds one explanation, it stops looking for more. After all, why look for another explanation when it already has one, people find one person who can be guilty of a crime, why look for another? They kill that one and think that is enough just because they can't kill everyone who might be guilty. They don't look for another way to solve the problem because it is difficult and people don't like difficulties. But we do, and we are not going to destroy anything. We say, yes, everything is possible. Everything has its own laws. And if we don't know them yet, we will definitely find them out. Where can you find information about time portals? And how can you find them? Well, the sources that have stood the test of time are ancient temples and shrines with the symbol of a labyrinth or spiral. They were created specifically for the purpose of time travel. While many of them remain open, others have been closed, 
deliberately destroyed or dismantled. There is a good book called The Riddle of the Labyrinth. This book is included in the library of our school and we study it for this very purpose in our general theory of magic course. I recommend that you read it if you are interested in finding portals located in the labyrinths. In the book, you will be able to find geographical points that you can visit in order to learn more about them. Don't think of this book as a collection of ethnographic material, think of it as a set of instructions on how to use time portals. Our ancient, not very educated, and not very literate ancestors may not have known much, but they felt deeply. They built these portals, these passages, because they knew how. They just didn't have the time to leave instructions on how to use them. Modern ethnographers try to describe these instructions without really knowing how. So one piece of information is a description of the result, while the other is an attempt to somehow find an algorithm for achieving that result. Modern mages combine two approaches, one deeply scientific and the other purely mythological. Using a third element and a different algorithm of understanding reality, they try to resolve this irreconcilable conflict between fairy tales and the attempt to explain them scientifically. Perhaps you will be able to find and understand for yourself what portals are, where to find them, how they appear, and whether there are any underlying principles to this phenomenon or whether it is completely chaotic and driven by a personal inner element within you. Or perhaps you will find something else. As I've already mentioned, this information doesn't belong to the proto-foundation good, meaning it's not available to everyone, and there is a reason for that. You see, humans are often very arrogant and, unfortunately, quite ignorant creatures. What would they do if they found a time portal? Such portals are sealed for a reason, not only to prevent anything from the other side from entering our world, but also to prevent you from crossing over. After all, they don't always lead to places where you are welcome. But most people can't even imagine that they might not be welcome anywhere. Most people have an infantile way of thinking, and like babies, they never consider that the sweets might be meant for someone else not for them. Such a possibility doesn't even cross their minds, the same goes for the portals. Perhaps they are meant for something else. And your intrusion into another reality can cause significant harm, not to you, but to the inhabitants of that space. The new currents of information that you bring can be disruptive and damaging to them. These beings exist in their own space with the same rights and freedoms that you enjoy in your own home. And just as you wouldn't want something like that to happen in your home, neither would they. So first knowledge, then power. You must learn before you can understand. When you make contact with representatives of other worlds, you find a way to each other. Once you've found it, you don't have to worry about how to get to another world. You can travel in any direction, forward or backward, simply and easily. However, representatives from the other realms must allow you to enter on the other side. In fact, 
Even demons don't come to our world without being summoned. They don't enter without an invitation, it is forbidden. But some people are worse than demons. They keep intruding into other worlds uninvited, and even if they're turned away at the door, they still try to get in through the window, think about it. Maybe if we didn't behave so badly, no one would have to defend themselves against us and block these portals. No offense intended, but really, try to see it from the other side.